In an episode of The Simpsons, Homer says that the sum of the square roots of any two sides of an isosceles triangle is equal to the square root of the remaining side. In today's video, we're going to be exploring whether that is true. Spoiler alert, it's not. Everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. I do hope you are all well. Let me know how you're doing in the comments down below. Now for today's video, we're gonna be doing a little bit of maths, but we're actually going to be having a look at maths in The Simpsons. Homer's theorem, like I said, is that the sum of the square roots of any two sides of an isosceles triangle is equal to the square root of the remaining side. It sounds a little bit like Pythagoras, but it's actually not. Don't get them mixed up. The things that are wrong with this sentence is that Homer says the sum of the square roots. So I'm going to kind of want to investigate square roots. And he says any two sides of an isosceles triangle. So any two sides, an isosceles triangle. I've never really noticed that. So we need to investigate. And he also says that that is equal to the square root of the remaining side. So let's... Let's first of all just clear up that. That's a bit better. Let's investigate what Homer's saying. Let's draw ourselves an isosceles triangle. Now an isosceles triangle has two sides that are equal in length. And in this case, it's gonna be these two sides here. So that side and that side are equal in length. And also an isosceles triangle has these two angles equal. So because we know about these two lengths being equal, I don't know the actual length of them. So I'm just gonna give them a letter. I'm gonna call them both side A. I'm gonna call the base side here at the bottom, I'm gonna call that side B. Now Homer's theorem says that if we square root any two sides of the isosceles triangle and add them together, we'll get the square root of the other side. So I'm going to square root these two sides here. The square root of A plus the square root of A will give me the square root of B. So the square root of A plus the square root of A will give me the square root of B. But because Homer says the square root of any two sides, I can square root B and I can add that to square root A and that will give me the square root of A. So from that isosceles triangle and using Homer's theorem, we've got two equations there. I'm gonna call that equation one and I'm gonna call that equation two. I'm gonna first of all look at equation two. Now equation two says that the square root of A plus the square root of B is the square root of A. And straight away, I can see that I can manipulate that by taking away the square root of A from both sides because we've got the square root of A on both sides so we can just take them away and cancel them out. So what we'll get is that the square root of B is equal to zero. Okay, that means the square root of any number, which is just B, is equal to zero. The only number B can be is zero because the square root of zero is zero. So that implies that B is equal to zero. Without this being in the context of the isosceles triangle, all of the math that I've just done there is absolutely correct. We don't have any conditions on B if we don't have this triangle involved. Because we've got this triangle involved, we know that B is a length because we set B to be a length. So B must be greater than zero because we can't have a length being zero. This cannot be true as B is a length. So therefore, B has to be greater than zero because B is a length. So it doesn't really work for the second equation when we use the square root of A and the square root of B. It doesn't give us the square root of the other side. Now let's have a look at this equation here. These two sides are equal in length, so we square rooted them, we added them together, and then we get, according to Homer, the square root of B. Let's take that, let's take the square root of A and the square root of A. Does that give us the square root of B? Well, straight away on the left-hand side there, I can get two times the square root of A is equal to the square root of B. And then I kind of want to get rid of the square root. So to do that, we can just square both sides. So there's two times root A all squared will be the square root of B all squared. Then I'm going to expand my brackets. I'm going to get four A, is equal to B. Now remember, A and B are lengths. So what that is saying is that the length B, here we've got B, that length B is four times the length of A. 
So let's write that down. What that is saying is B is four times the length of A. So let's try and draw a triangle off that information. Let's draw B along there. That is my side B. And it says that B is four times the length of A. Well, we know that A is the same length because on the isosceles triangle up here, A was the sides that are the same. Now, if we put all that together, we're going to get something that kind of looks like that. And we can see that those are the lengths A we cannot get a triangle out of that. So we can't form a triangle. So therefore, that first equation, the square root of A plus the square root of A gives us the square root of B, is not true. Homer's maths isn't going great so far. So clearly the theorem is wrong, but Homer says the theorem just for isosceles triangles. We've proved there that it doesn't work for isosceles triangles. So let's have a look, for example, at any triangle. Any triangle will just look something like that. And we're just gonna label them this time A, B, and C because the sides are not the same. So here is A, there's B, and there's C. This time Homer's theorem is going to look like this. The square root of A plus the square root of B is equal to the square root of C because what we're doing is we're just doing this side plus this side and we're square rooting them gives us this side square rooted. Now again, what I want to do is I want to get rid of the square roots. And to do that, I'm going to square both sides. So I'm going to get the square root of A plus the square root of B squared is equal to the square root of C squared. Now expand your brackets. Be careful when you expand. You're going to get A plus two root A root B plus B is equal to C. Now I'm going to come down here and rearrange that a little bit to give me a plus b plus two root a root b is equal to c. What that tells me is that a plus b, the sum of these two sides here, is just a little bit longer than this base side here, c. Because we're adding these two sides together and adding a little bit more onto it. So it says that these two sides added together is just a little bit longer than side C. So let's have a look like we did previously and let's see if we can form a triangle from that. Here we've got side C and then let's put A and B on. What we've got from the equation above is that C is a little bit longer than A and B added together. So let's say that is side A. If we add on to that side B, C is just a little bit longer. Let's try and form a triangle from that like we did previously. Here is side C, that is side A, and that is side B. Oops, that's gone as a curve, let's do that again. That is side B. We can see that we can't form a triangle from Homer's theorem. So it doesn't work for any triangle. So we've kind of proved it doesn't work for an isosceles triangle, and we've kind of proved it doesn't work for any triangle. So unfortunately, Homer's theorem doesn't work. Of course, we know that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared for a right angle triangle in Pythagoras. That definitely works, but what doesn't work is Homer's theorem, so don't get that confused. So it's quite interesting to see how maths is in different TV shows and how they kind of implement it and kind of errors that they make in TV shows. I think they are deliberate errors because lots of people behind the scenes are mathematicians, but it's just kind of weird to hear Homer say some maths and then for us to prove that it's wrong. That is all I've got for today's video. If you did enjoy, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below. Let me know of any other TV shows that include a little bit of maths. There is more maths in The Simpsons that I'm willing to explore. A little bit about Fermat's last theorem, but I will leave that for another video. Thanks for watching everybody and I will see you very, very soon with a brand new video. Bye.
Oh, stack's gone as a curve. Let's do that again. 